everyone. So this is Haven and I am on part 8 of the Blender for Beginners series. Now I've done tutorials on this particular tool before, but it really is something that beginners you need to know now. You need to n learn this at the beginning of your Blender experience because it is probably one of the most helpful tools you'll ever use. And it's really very simple. It does take a little practice, but not so much <laughs> that nothing to be intimidated by but it's a very powerful tool that we have and it is called proportional editing and it works great on anything organic that you're making it is extremely useful when you're making clothing in different sizes or just making clothing in one size uh, this is something that you must know there are a few little tricks about using it and I will show you as we get to them. But let me show you first a little bit about what this actual tool can do. The first thing that it can do is it can transform our little monkey here into something from our imaginations, anything that we can think of. We can take his ear and we can give him a bunny ear. We can round out his eye sockets or his eyebrows. We can give him bug eyes and a big nose and a fat muscle and a bigger smile. We can do all kinds of things, but think about this for a moment. How easy do you think it would be to select these different um, uh, vertices and reshape them? I mean, even if you were to use circle select and select these, and try not to select too many of them, and start to lift them up, you can see that's really not going to help us. I mean, how hard is that to try and get even just an eyebrow manipulated? It's not easy. You know, lifting these up and trying to reshape them would take hours and hours of work. The kind of work that you should just say, forget it, dump it, and do something else, or start from scratch. But proportional editing gives us the ability to do exactly what we tried to do with ease and to do so much more of it. We can select one simple vertex on a shape <clears throat> and using our proportional editing we can move an, uh, a, um, a section or an area of vertices around proportionally which means that the first vertex that we selected of course that gets moved the most. And then the next vertice away from it gets moved almost as much as the first. The next row of vertices down get moved just a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less as you go along to the outside of this area of influence that I'm circling my mouse around right now. Anything within this area that is connected is going to get moved proportionally. So you see at the bottom of the ear, it's hardly moving at all whereas the ones up here near the vertex I've selected are being moved a lot, okay? And this area of influence can actually be changed. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can adjust it on the fly. So while you're using it, you can actually change it so that you affect only the areas of the mesh that you want to. So you can make this bigger, you can make it much, much smaller, anything that you want. We can even go so far as to select a vertex from two completely different areas. And if we grab those and move them, you'll see both of them getting affected. Now the thing is, is that this area of influence is one size. It is one size for each of these vertices. It's the same thing only being done on each one that one area is put in between the two vertices that you've selected. So you have to kind of guess where that area is going out to. In this case, you see it's this big where I'm circling my mouse. It's that big. But we can't really tell how big that is in reference to that first um, vertice we selected except by looking at it. So here, let's go ahead and now we've kind of bugged up the eyelids a little bit, lifted them up. We can also select those two center vertices and hit S and we can scale them up or pull them out. 
not scale or yeah I am scaling I'm sorry scaling them out a little bit so they look a little bug-eyed we can select her muzzle and we can scale it up on an axis so S and X and we're getting the muzzle pulled out you can pull it on one axis as well if you want to even by using the arrow now I will tell you I don't suggest using the arrows to manipulate this mesh unless you're going to keep your area of influence exactly the size that it is because if you've noticed it's disappeared and come back disappeared and come back it only appears when it's being used so if I pull this up I'm pulling the arrow so the influence shows up but by pulling on the arrow I would have to use my middle mouse button to scroll in and out to make that bigger and smaller or I can even use my page up and page down buttons but honestly that's a lot more work and you can get finger cramps this way by pulling on that arrow if instead <coughs> you do stick to using your G R and S keys you can move your mouse freely and your area of influence stays there until you confirm your movement but I'm pressing absolutely nothing on my mouse I'm just moving it and I have my middle finger free to scroll through that area of influence so that I can get as detailed as I want to with it all right so we just kind of transformed our little monkey a little bit let's see what we can do with it in another situation and that would be with clothes oftentimes we make clothing we use shrink wraps we use other modifiers we use a variety of tools we bring in OBJ's or you know DAE files that other people give us and you'll get to all of that soon enough but the thing is is we have lots of reasons to use this and now if you're working with clothing you can see that this back just doesn't fit her very well at all so I can select a vertice that would be at the lower part of her dress here there we go and I can use G and Y with a larger influence and where is my influence is very oh because I didn't turn it on yet so G and Y and now there's my influence and now you see I can adjust that and pull it out just as I need to so I can pull a lot of it out a big distance or pull a lot of it out a little distance and then when I pull it again I can get smaller so that I can get really close to what I want you know then we have her abs here so we can select one of the verts on each side of her and again G and Y and we can simply pull that out we can manipulate um, the mesh here in the breast area <clears throat> again I'm using Y to use the um, axis the way that I want to and anyways voila you work with this a little bit and you start to get the shape you want now this looks like crap because I messed this up so that we could fix it together or so that you could at least see me trying to fix it um, but I'll show you what this turned out to or what this started out as before I messed it up you can see all of my selections from ruining it and just that's about it so I did use proportional editing to help me make this in the first place and I would come back to actually tweak it a little bit better but um, yeah so clothing is another um, instance in which, which you really want to use it so let's go back here and delete our monkey and let's see how to use this in a more clear way for you I'm going to bring in a plane and in top view oops I'll put it in edit mode and I'll give it some subdivisions up to about 50 and I will also scale this up a little bit to give us something nice to work with all right so <clears throat> oh you have to forgive me my voice is going out on me okay so now um, you can call up the proportional editing key with the shortcut key of O when I hit O you will see this button highlight in a blue 
and you will find another button pops up right here next to it. This is the fall off type and this is the way in which all of the vertices follow the first one that was selected. By default though, when you press the O key, you get a proportional editing that's called projected. And projected is going to affect anything within the view of the inside of that area of influence. Whereas if you choose connected, it's only going to affect inside that area, but it has to be connected. So let me show you a little bit about that one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up uh, some of this one. So let me go ahead and pick that up like that. I will come over here and I will pick up another one like that. And now if I were to select this top vertice, and you can see the size of my area of influence, and watch what happens. I'm going to use it and I'm going to have some of that second over here. Some of that is selected in that area as well. But when I turn this, that is not at all affected you'll see it is only affected down to this point where the actual circle is, where the circle end is. But if you were to be in projected view, and let's say we click on this one and hit R for rotate, as I turn this, you'll see simply because this mesh is within that circle in the view, it's getting deformed as well. Okay. So projected is going to get anything in the view and connected it's going to make sure that it's anything that is connected to the one that you've selected. All right, so let's go ahead and see what kind of fall offs we have real quick. I'm going to go back into control Z here and get rid of all that. So if I'm in connected and I click on this little button, you see what I have is smooth right here. And smooth means that it's just going to come up like a little hill. And that's cool. It's a nice, smooth, curvy little hill. You can even see you've got a little curve here going up and a little curve coming off. We can go here and we can change it to something else. So let's go to sphere. And now when we bring it up, it looks like half of a ball, half of a sphere. We have a couple of fun ones. Um, sharp, when you bring that one up, it looks like an SL mountain almost, uh, which is another thing that you can use this for. If you're making a raw terrain file, it's a little bit advanced for right now, but just so that you know, you can come into Blender and you can landscape your second life, um, land with it. As long as you have rights to changing that terrain file in second life, you can do it. We have constant, which will bring it up um, flat. So it's completely flat. And what's fun about this is you do it again, only you make it a little bit smaller and bring it up. Do it again and make it a little smaller. So as you bring it up, you can make it whatever size you want to. Have a little wedding cake or a little volcano and bring that down. So it's kind of fun to play with this. You can do all kinds of things. So what I'd like you to do is to open up your Blender and I'd like you to uh, use your O key to turn it on if you want, but always, always come down here and choose Connected. Mess around with your fall off levels and just get an idea of how they work. Again, using your G, R, and S keys is, um, is really what I would recommend. It's optimal performance, uh, and that way you have um, nothing going on with your mouse except you can use your middle mouse button to, you know, uh, change that area of influence, which makes this tool so much easier to use that way. Uh, then go ahead and bring in another shape and see if you can't distort or kind of create something using this tool. The next video that we're going to have is all about joining and separating things. It's also going to be about joining and separating and parenting and things that um, uh, are connected, uh, objects that are connected, and uh, stuff like that. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and it's more stuff that you really do need to know. So make sure that you come back for the next one. Please make sure that you subscribe and share the links and uh, let everybody know that 
Blender is easy. And I'll catch you later. Bye.